Hello, my name is Martin Keiblinger, and I did a thing. I played with native script, and now I want to talk about it. I'm a senior dev at Sikta with a bit of experience in Android. Uh, I worked as startup advisor for Musify. I did their Android app. Then I did a little freelance gig for Creative Pragmatics and their career app. And I wrote a little free software, mental math training app called Mental Math X. Check it out if you want. And today I talk about native script. Um, I have four sections prepared. First, what is native script? Then I show similar frameworks and do a very shallow comparison. Then I talk about what I did plan to implement with native script and what I actually implemented <laughs> and why there's a difference. <laughs> so first of all, what is native script? It's a product from a company called Teleric. Um, I know them from the time I did C Sharp development. They do a lot of UI frameworks for C Sharp and other stuff I learned today. Native script itself is a framework for writing iOS and Android apps. It's basically a JS framework which either utilizes Angular 2 or their own model view, view model framework. It comes with a command line tool for debugging and deploying, packaging, etc. So if you write the app, you're in the red or green area. Either you write JavaScript application code or a native plugin. A native plugin is Java or Objective-C code with a bit of JavaScript wrapper. This is packaged with a native script runtime. I just looked in the Android compilation, which comes with a V8 for yeah, AMD x86, mm, and that's it. Um, yeah, and the, the native script runtime works in the V8 interpreter and uh, wraps the native app environment calls. Similar frameworks are Titanium Accelerator. Accelerator is pretty old. They got in the market very soon. It's major, it works pretty good, but it's expensive and they focus on their cloud service, which I don't like. But I have to say, in one project I worked they used Titanium and it worked very, very well. Then there's React Native. I, for my part, don't like React, but it seems to work good too. And there's Fuse. I don't know Fuse. The only thing I know, it doesn't run the application code on the UI thread, but in a second thread. And um, that's the common thing all frameworks here have. So you write your code, it runs in a separate thread, and if you want to render something, it goes to the UI thread and renders it out. That's the very opposite of a hybrid framework, which runs in a web view. So in um, native script and the other frameworks, you don't actually render HTML, you render something uh, framework dependent. So it's not Apache Car um, Cordova, PhoneGap, or Ionic. What did I plan? I wanted to write a speed reading app. I don't know if someone knows Spritz, it's called. Um, it's very nice, it shows word by word, centered and adjusted so that you can read it as fast as possible. I wanted to extract content from an arbitrary web page on the, also in the app itself. The main goal is to make it compatible to all the other apps. So if I'm in the browser or in Feedly, I want to hit share and open my app and chuck speed read the content. Then I wanted to tidy up the interface and publish it in the Play Store. Yeah. <laughs> That's what worked out. So. Uh, the content extraction turned out harder than I thought. I did write content extraction in Java and JavaScript before. So I thought that should be easy, but it wasn't. And because of the problems I had, I just uh, finished the basic functionality of doing speed reading with an arbitrary link. 
but the actual content extraction does a web service. And yeah, the app looks like that. So if you share the, the web page, the app opens, you hit start, word by word shows, and after you're finished, yeah, it looks like that. The code is open source. You can have a look at it at word by word at my Schlingel repository. Not the most serious name, but that's how I roll. Um, just to continue some questions to the talk before. Um, there's also a three-year-old um, repository where I tried Canvas and it did everything wrong. It's really terribly slow. So have a look how bad you can turn your JavaScript. So what did I like in native script? Um, Angular is nice and their observer object, data binding, model view, view model handling is also nice. They come with a packaged observable. You instance it, set your functions and your properties, wire it to your UI and you're ready to go. That's all you need. It just works. That's very nice. The styling with CS is nice too. You have the option to make it app-wide or for a specific view. You may uh, separate the styling for iOS and for Android. That works pretty nice. Angular 2 and TypeScript is nice. You have the option to use NPM modules, but not all. When you stay in the JavaScript code itself, it works pretty fast, but it's hard to get there. But let's come to that later. The interface to the native platform is nice too. Um, when you look at Titanium Accelerator, it's more hard to write um, code which interacts with the runtime than here. And Live Sync works pretty well too for the JavaScript part. The bad, uh, when you try some NPM models, you will quickly find dependencies which rely on crypto or network libraries. And that just doesn't work. That's horrible. I didn't found a single XML library which worked because they all had either a dependency to crypto or network. The setup is fragile. I installed native script two months ago. The first thing I experienced was a very strange error. Then I looked it up. Two weeks ago, someone came up with a solution, just reinstall it. Okay. Then I continued to work. Tried some libraries, nothing worked again, got strange errors in the browser. Okay, wipe node modules, don't use these modules, and then it works. And then there are some packages which even break the build. I don't know why, but they interfere with the um, dependencies of native script itself. And then not even the Android build works. I, I don't know how they managed to do that, but somehow the node modules manages to break the Gradle build. It's, it's still a mystery to me how that works. <laughs> yeah, uh, and there are some ugly things. For one, the executables are really huge because the package v8 for AMD and x86. Um, the, the most serious problem is the handling of threads because there isn't any. You have the option to, to use um, web workers, which sounds great, but web workers, on the other hand, can't in, uh, interact with the uh, native script API, so you don't have uh, the possibility to use the runtime, which shrinks the class of, option, uh, of, of the stuff you can do seriously. Um, live sync and platform dependent stuff doesn't work at all. I, uh, I tried for 40 minutes or so to register my broadcast receiver in the Android manifest and it just didn't work. And after 40 minutes, 40 minutes, I, <laughs> I, 40 minutes, I, I, I canceled the stuff and just rebuilt it and it worked. That's very frustrating. Uh, the, the next thing I, I really hate is runtime errors are just silent. <laughs> Nothing happens and you, <laughs> um, And it's really easy to find an NPM module which doesn't work. <laughs> so 
to summarize my work with the framework, um, more than half of the time <laughs> I was <laughs> swearing and trying to get it to work. Um, but after it worked, actually implementing is very, very fast. <laughs> Um, as I said before, I did implement uh, some kind of speed reading in Android before. It's on my GitHub repo too. Um, and I needed about three or four times the code I needed here in JavaScript. That's really nice. But you need much work to get there. So my summary is it's not suitable at all to at, the, at this moment. No, don't use it. Um, it feels very better, but um, I don't know if there are any Android developers here. If you think back, Android Studio developed by Google, a huge company. The first version felt like this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like native script feels. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. First of all, thank you for your honest opinion. Have you been sponsored by Tetherish? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, given your uh, thoughts on this uh, speech, yeah. if you were to develop an app for Android or some mobile platform based on JavaScript, uh, which one would you use? Today? Is there any recommendation you could give us? I didn't have a look at Fuse, so I would try Fuse first. Did you do something with Meteor? Um, not yet, but I don't like Node.js um, ORM mapping to relational databases. That really sucks. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's a showstopper for almost every serious app for me. Yeah, but to continue the answer, um, either Fuse or uh, Titanium, if you have serious money. <laughs> yeah, it's ex expensive. Cloud. Yeah, you're bound to the cloud, which isn't nice either. But it works good. You have to give them that. Yeah. So, so you would rather use something like Cordova instead of Native And if you don't have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the moment I would look at Ionic. Yeah, but Ionic runs in Cordova. That's true, but why start with Cordova when you have Yeah, Ionic? It, it's just the, 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 the framework for the interface, basically. Yeah, but they do a lot of hard work with yeah. transitions and stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for watching this talk. Down below you can find our channel Vienna.js where you can find a lot of different videos about front-end and back-end JavaScript and feel free to subscribe.